hypothetic police. There's a woman in our midst this evening whose commitment to public service broadcasting and to the work that we all do is extremely strong and much appreciated. She is Claire Dignan, Managing Director of RTE Radio. Claire. Uh, Minister, Director General and Delegates, Fáilte Roy Galair, you're all extremely welcome to this 35th International Futures Conference here in Dublin. And first of all, Minister, on behalf of RTE and on behalf of everybody in the room, I want to thank you for honouring us with your presence this evening. We know how full your schedule is, the many demands on your time, not least a number of, of pressing election matters and referendum <laughs> matters and so on. So we see your presence here as a recognition of the value that you place on public service broadcasting, which is something all of us in this room are really committed to. Radio is that most intimate of mediums, and it's why so many people love it. It's at once everywhere and yet unobtrusive and discreet. And we listen to our radios sitting in the corners of our kitchen. We listen in the shower, well, I do anyway, at our desks, in cars, on headphones while cycling to work or walking the dog. We listen by the bed as we wake or drift off to sleep. And that very act of listening makes us part of a wider community of radio listeners. Sure. Now, most often, radio leads us out into the public arena where we respond to the issues of the day and we often drive the public agenda by our very engagement with radio as a medium. And we share the concerns of local areas, of counties, of nations and the world beyond. But sometimes, radio brings us within to a quieter quarter of music or speech where our personal response to what we hear is limited only by the constraints of our own imagination. And this is what radio documentary and radio features particularly do. And in a very crowded radio landscape, radio documentary does have to fight very hard for its place, but it's such an important part of radio broadcasting. It's the place where we can take the time to reflect, to tell our stories, to examine all the aspects of our lives from the expansive to the minute. Like all media, radio is under huge financial pressure at the moment, but despite an international downturn in the budgets for features and documentaries, it's really encouraging to see that there's a constant movement of people into this area of radio production. And we're seeing this content on all of the radio platforms that people are listening to radio on. And what's particularly wonderful about this International Features Conference <coughs> is the opportunity it provides all of you as professionals to listen, to discuss, to share, to analyze through a process of peer learning which we hope will renew and invigorate documentary making internationally across cultural, language and geographical boundaries. And your very presence here this evening transcends those boundaries. And so on behalf of RTE Radio, I welcome all the delegates who are from Western Europe, Eastern Europe and the United States, Canada and Australia. And people from Ireland who are here, I also want to welcome, welcome not just colleagues from RTE, but also from Radio Ulster, BBC Northern Ireland, and I particularly want to welcome delegates from a number of independent radio production companies, third level media schools, and from local and community radio stations. You're all most welcome here. I also want to particularly welcome Peter Leonhard Braun from the Pre-Europa in Berlin, and René Fab Fabre from France. Both have been involved in this conference since its inception. And then I particularly want to welcome two former colleagues of mine and colleagues of all of us who worked in Radio 1. That's Michael Johnson, who organised the first International Features Conference that RTE hosted back in 1990. And Dick Warner, a colleague and very well-known documentary maker. And it's a real pleasure to see both of you here this evening. As Ireland's public service broadcaster, we are delighted to be hosting this conference in partnership with the organisation of the EBU. And I particularly want to thank Lorelai Harris, RTE's editor of Features, Arts and Drama, and the chairperson of the EBU Features Group, who was the driving force in bringing this conference to Ireland, and was ably supported by my colleague Lynn Davis, and I want to thank both of them on your behalf for the work they've put into organising this conference. In RTE's mission statement, we say that we want to provide distinctive programming and services of the highest quality and ambition for our listeners. And for now, the challenge for RTE, and for all of us working in radio, is to still do that, despite the huge financial challenges we all face. I know that your work in the days ahead will hone your skills as programme makers, and this means that listeners across the world will ultimately share in this conference because of what you will take back to your work in your stations and in your companies. <coughs> so as you set out on the work of this conference, it's a journey of work, 
And in Ireland, when people are setting out on a journey, we say, Gunairi on Bokerliv. May the road rise with you, and we wish you well for your conference. Mm -hmm.